Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, please email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our wonderful listeners. Thanks so much for your support. Among them, I want to thank Amanda, Ramona, and Aaron. And we'll be sending along access to our premium site, which we do with all donations of $7 or more. You can go to support.greatdetectives.net to support the program there, or email me at box13 at greatdetectives.net to contribute via mail. But now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, and it's a mouthful. So sit back and listen to the Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscope Matter. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Harry Branson at Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company. Oh, hi, Harry. What's on your mind? I have a case for you, a very important one. Good. Tell me about it. John, did you ever hear of Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote? Lord, who... Say that slowly, will you? Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote. Sorry, I left my kilts and bagpipes on the other side of the drink. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling real sharp this morning. But what about this Laird Douglas Douglas something or other? Uh, can you come down here to Philadelphia and see me? I hate to be so blunt about it, old boy, but what's in it for me? A nice retainer fee in any event. Well, good. And, of course, expenses and your regular commission if anything happens to Laird Douglas Douglas. Of Heatherscope. Uh, why, yes. Okay, Harry, I'm on my way. Oh, oh John. Yeah? Uh, come down by plane, will you? The first one you can get. Urgent, huh? Yes, John. Very. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Harry Branson at the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Following is an accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote matter, whoever Laird Douglas Douglas is, and whether investigation is the proper term at this point, who knows. In any event, well... <laughs> Expense account item one, 2250, air transportation and miscellaneous, Hartford to New York to Philadelphia. For a change, I decided to stay at the Benjamin Franklin, not only because it was convenient to Harry Branson's office on Walnut Street, that is, the office of Philly Mutual Liability and Casualty, but because I'd heard it was a nice hotel. It was. And it was convenient to everything else in the center of town. Theaters, good restaurants, nice stores, even a nightclub. Well, anyhow, when I got to my room, I found a half dozen urgent messages that Harry had called. Pretty good indication that his lordship, Douglas Douglas of... or at least this case was pretty important... So instead of bothering to unpack, I had the bellboy dump my luggage, tipped him, and was standing there debating whether I'd better forego a quick shower and change of clothes when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. John, didn't you get my messages? Why haven't you called? I've been waiting to hear from you. What's wrong? Hey, take it easy, Harry. I just this minute got in. Oh. Well, I hope you're coming right on over here to my office. What's the matter? Something happened to this client of yours? No, not yet. But being you, you're expecting the worst, huh? And look, you still haven't told me a thing about this emergency or whatever you want to call it. John, it is an emergency because of the time element. You see, why do we waste time on the phone? Well, this was your call, not mine. All right, all right, I'm sorry. I'll be waiting for you. And Harry, I'll be there. Still knowing nothing whatsoever about what was going on, I decided I'd better be prepared for anything. So I slipped the 38 cold out of my bag and took it along. Expense account item two, 65 cents, cab fare. I've said it before when I handled the Amerigo case for him. Harry Branson is a good insurance man, but a worrywart. 
So I kind of hoped he was making the usual mountain out of the usual molehill this time. However, when my cab pulled up in front of his office building, he was standing waiting on the sidewalk out front. Hey, I keep the change. Thank you, sir. John, John, what took you so long? Huh? Thank goodness you're here. Harry, what are you doing out here? Lose your office or just forget the key? I almost wish I had. John, we have a problem. A serious one. Yeah, with Laird Douglas, Douglas of, uh... Heatherscoat, Heatherscoat. He's up in my office yeah, now. Sounds like international intrigue. Has Scotland declared war on us or something? This is no time for levity. He's up in the office now and you must take over immediately. This is a very serious situation. Come. Okay. Oh, now, what's it all about? Has Laird Douglas died and... Oh, no, no, you said he was up in your office. And I'm sure you don't mean just his body. Yes, he's there with Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten. Kelly Van... Huh? Are you kidding? I certainly am not. You see, she insists that you act as his bodyguard. Oh, now, wait a minute, Harry. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately for you... 13th floor, please. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, I said 13th floor, operator. Please, quickly. Yes, sir. So, Harry? Unfortunately... Young man, will you please start this elevator immediately? Got to wait for the signal, sir. Signal? This is an emergency. Take off immediately. Emergency? Yes, it involves Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscope. Oh, well, sure, if it's... Who? Good man, good man. <sighs> okay. Now, you were saying, Harry... Was I? Uh, unfortunately something. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Fortunately for you, she was quite cognizant of the fact... Who was that... cognizant? Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten. She knew about the excellent work you did for us in connection with the Ricardo Amerigo case not long ago. Excellent detective work, she called it. Thirteenth floor. You remember the case, Ricardo, the concert violinist who disappeared, presumably. Yeah, murdered. I remember. And your almost intuitive deduction that he wasn't dead at all, but had merely staged the whole thing to make it uh, look as the... Ah, Harry. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Thirteenth floor. You mean uh, Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van... Excuse me, mister, but I'm getting signals from the other floors. You're quite right, you should. As I started to say, John... She is one of our biggest personal policy holders. Good, good. But uh, hadn't we better get into your office and meet her? Oh, yes, yes. But I want you to know about the personal premiums. Alone, they run to something over $20,000 a year. Mr. Please. Well, she is an important client. Yes, yes. And that's why I Mr. didn't... Mr. Williams, I didn't please? hesitate to accede to her request that you be called in on this case. I called you and here you are. Mr. Please. Hmm? Oh, well, get us up to the... Th oh, oh, we're here. Why didn't you tell us? Come, John. Mister, if I was to tell you what I'd like to, I... My office is right this way, John. Come, please. Hey, look, you better calm down, Harry, and give me the dope on this case right from the beginning. Yes. Yes, I'd better. All right. Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten is a very important client, has been for years. So you said. But there are a lot of things you haven't said, like... Uh... What has she got to do with this Laird Douglas character, and why is he so important? It's this way, John. The policy on him runs to $5,000. No double indemnity, which is good. As a matter of fact, the policy on him was purely a favor to Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten. You know, considering such short life expectancy and all. No, I don't know. Is he in his dotage or something? Well, hardly. Or are you being facetious again? But you said... Hey, how old is he? His birthday is next month, May 7th to be exact. He'll be four years old. He... Four? That's right. Short life expectancy? Of course, you see, John. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, uh, some horrible disease or something, huh? What's the matter with him? John, you wanted this from the beginning, so I'll give it to you from the beginning. Okay, but Harry, If it you're... hadn't been for Mrs. Van Pyten's own policies totaling something in the neighborhood of half a million, uh, more in fact... Harry... Why, we'd never have written the one on Lord Douglas Douglas of Heatherscoat. So, now we've cleared that up. Harry, we passed your office three or four doors ago. Hmm? Oh, yes. Yeah. But uh, as I'm sure you understand, I wanted to give you some of the background before you talk with Mrs. Van Pyten. After all, you asked for it. Yes, yes, I guess I did. But uh, what you've given me so far has landed me smack dab in the Department of Utter Confusion. And I'm beginning to think maybe I have company. Oh, where? Who? Right here. You, Harry. Now, look. Why don't we quietly stroll into your office and let me get the whole thing from Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten herself? Or better still, from Laird Douglas Douglas. But you couldn't. Of course not. What? At least not from him. Oh, why not? John, will you please stop joking? Who's joking? This is serious business. Very. <sighs> Look, Harry. Yes? There is one thing I'd like to talk over before we go in to see him. Them. Somebody. Yes? Yeah? Well, apparently the life and or welfare of this Laird Douglas Douglas is in danger. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. 
I thought I'd made that very clear to you. Yeah, well, you said you've written only a $5,000 policy on it. That's right, $5,000. And purely yeah, as a... Yeah, yeah, I know all about that. Now, look, I don't want to seem crass about it, Harry, but my commission, if anything were to happen to him, wouldn't amount to a hill of beans. Which is precisely why I told you you will be paid a retainer while you're on the case. A most generous one. A generous one? By you? By Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten. How much? Well, John, <clears throat> now mind you, this may not require your services for more than a week or so. As bodyguard, that is. How much? And, of course, she has authorized an expense account. Ah. But, mind you, John... Not the usual kind that you seem to have the knack of piling up beyond all reason. Clearly, a completely honest, legitimate accounting... Harry, that... how much? Well, as a matter of cold fact, I have assured her that it will total no more than the amount of the retainer she is prepared to pay you. Any more than that, and, uh, well, you'll have a lot of explaining to do. Harry, how much is this retainer to be, if I take the case? I might even go so far... $750 per week, or a fraction thereof, and I am sure you will agree that that... What's the matter, John? Seven fifty a week, plus expenses, when there's only a $5,000 policy involved? That's right. But if this four-year-old Laird Douglas Douglas of... of, of, of Heather Scott. Yeah. If he's only worth a $5,000 policy, what was that crack about short life expectancy? John, I told you he is already four years old. He... Oh, look, start all over again, will you, Harry? Yes. No, on second thought, perhaps you were right. Perhaps you'd better get the details directly from Mrs. Peter Malcolm, Malcolm Kelly, Kelly Van Pyten. I know. Now, look, Harry, I, I think I'd better. I'd better get it from somebody. You're Incidentally, not... John, you understand, of course, that your services will be required only during the affair at Bala Kinwood. And not one minute no, thereafter. No, I don't understand. What's Bala Kinwood? Out around Westchester, outside the city, one of the suburbs. Very nice suburb, too. That is where Leia Douglas Douglas... How about this, Coat? Yes, John, that is where he will appear. And you or Mrs. Kelly Van Pyden, or both, if you think his life will be in danger. Exactly. Oh, John, I knew you were just joking me all the time. I wish I knew. Uh, <clears throat> here we are, and everything will be clear. Yeah. Oh, thank heavens, dear Mr. Branson. I was afraid something had happened to you. You were gone so long, you really had me quite worried. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I had hoped to tell Mr. Dollar something of this affair, and I'm afraid we loitered on the way up. Uh, Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten, this is Mr. John Dollar. Oh, you wonderful, wonderful man. I'm so glad that you've agreed to take on this assignment. You see, Laird Douglas Douglas means everything to me. And I have the utmost confidence in you. I'm sure Laird Douglas will, too. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but where is he? Uh, why, yes, Mrs. Van Pyten, what's happened to him? Oh, don't worry, don't worry, my dear. He's all right. But after all... He is so temperamental. I fear he got a bit impatient waiting for you, and I know you'll forgive him. You will, won't you? Yes, yes, of course, but where is he? He's asleep, Mr. Branson, in your inner office. He sat down in your chair and fell fast asleep. Oh, if I could only relax that way. But you must meet him, Mr. Dollar. Yes, I'd certainly like to. Of course you would, and I know he'll want to meet you. Gently now. Good, he's awake. Oh, no. That's Laird... Laird Douglas, Douglas of Heatherscote. This is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Hey, oh, John! Hey, Douglas, Douglas, Harry, no. somebody! Let go of Mr. Dollar's leg. Douglas, dear. Douglas! Johnny Dollar. Ray Rowland, Johnny. Oh, hi, Ray. Just got your message. What are you doing in Philadelphia? Oh, a case for Philly Mutual Liability and Casualty, and I may need your help. What do you know about Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote? Why, he's one of Scotland's finest. Wait a minute. That's your case? Yep. Insurance? And bodyguard. How's about lunch? Johnny, have you met the... Have you met his lairdship? Yeah, and I nearly lost a leg doing it. Oh. Then you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company, in connection with my investigation, or rather my involvement in the Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote matter. And I wish I'd had some idea of what I was getting into before I ever left Hartford. 
But it's too late now. Expense account item three, thirty-nine fifty. One pair of slacks. For within a few minutes of my arrival in Philadelphia, Harry Branson of Philly Mutual buttonholed me and dragged me up to his office to meet two important clients he had. First was Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten. Oh, you wonderful, wonderful man. I am so glad that you've agreed to take on this assignment. Laird Douglas Douglas means everything to me, and I have the utmost confidence in you. I'm sure Laird Douglas will, too. And then came... Well, Mrs. Van Pyten made the introduction. Laird Douglas Douglas of Hedderscote, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Holy <laughs> jump of Douglas, the... Douglas, oh, no, you mustn't do that. Oh, my. Douglas, oh, dear, good heavens. Get on oh, your own chair, Harry. This no, one's taken. No. Sorry, John, sorry. Down, Douglas, down. Oh, oh. There, dear, that's the boy. That's a nice boy. That yes, is now. Laird Douglas Douglas of Hedderscope? Yes, isn't he adorable? He's so playful. He was really just playing, you know. There, dear, come out. Harry. Yes, John? This yes, is the client you call me all the way down from Hartford to see? Yes, John, yes. 750 a week, practically unlimited expense account. Oh, dear, just look at your trousers, Mr. Dollar. I don't need to, thanks. I can feel the draft. But you'll need new ones. Here. And I insist you let me pay for it. Down, oh, Douglas, oh, oh, oh. down. Here, Mr. Dollar. Will a hundred dollars be enough? Uh, he... No, here, a hundred and fifty. I can see those were very, very nice. Well, uh, you see what I mean, John? Here, please. Now, I insist you take it. And if it isn't no, enough... No, 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 thanks. That's plenty. But now, Harry, you listen to me. John, I know what you're going to say, but as I explained to you on the way up you to my office... You explained plenty, but not nearly enough. But I tried. I really I tried. I think boys. you and I had better have a quiet little talk, Harry, and the sooner the better. Oh, boys, please, can't you do that another time? Please come down from those chairs so Mr. Dollar can meet Douglas and we can make all the arrangements. Please? Mrs. Van Pyten, that's precisely what I want to talk about. <laughs> you really look very funny up there. And see, Douglas does want so much to be friends with you. Yeah, you're sure it isn't a piece of my leg he wants. Oh, no, of course not. Here, Mr. Dollar, just give him one of these biscuits. I have them specially baked for him. And he'll be your friend for life. Really? Huh? Here, now just come down and hand it to him. Well, He'll love you. It's true, John, I know. Yeah? Then what are you doing up on that chair? I I forgot, that's all. Nice, Douglas. Huh? Please, Mr. Dollar. Well, hey, oh, all I hope is he doesn't forget. That's right. Just hand it and to him. And then he knows which is biscuit and which is my hand. He, yo, uh, here, boy. Here, boy. Now, take it easy, take it easy. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Now he's your friend, well, isn't that sweet? Yeah, yeah, sure is. Well, well, I'd better get back to my hotel and change it. Harry, I'll call you. Oh, but we haven't made the definite arrangements yet, and I want you staying out at our place in Germantown, the Maples. It's a lovely little place, Mr. Dollar. Well, much as I hate to say it, I'm, I'm not quite sure about taking oh, this Oh, I know. The money. Well, don't you worry about it. Not at all, not one bit. If you'd rather have a thousand dollars a week, that's what we'll make it. And I do wish Mrs. you'd let Van me Pyton. do more about these poor trousers. I know. Why don't you go straight over to Wanamaker's men's store and have them tailor you a whole suit? Wouldn't that be nice? You'd look lovely. You've in... already given me more than enough oh, to buy a suit. that. Now, just forget it. Now, you have them make you anything you want and just charge it to me. Oh, and look! Douglas Deere is licking your hand. I knew he'd like you. Never underestimate the power of a woman, somebody once said. Or maybe they should have said never underestimate the power of a fast buck or a thousand bucks. Anyhow, Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten had set her heart on my handling this whole affair, and she simply wasn't to be denied. Couple that with a chance to pick up enough loot in a few days to, uh... Well, what would you do? And the darn mutt did take a liking to me. So, with Laird Douglas Douglas in my lap... Oh, he's a Scotty, by the way. Scottish Terrier, Mr. Dollar. If you'll pardon my correcting you. Sorry. And it's all because of the show at Bala Kinwid on Friday. Bala where? Uh, B-A-L-A-C-Y-N-W-I-D, John. Yes, Bala Kinwid. Laird Douglas Douglas simply must win. Not only best of class, but best of show. And he will if somebody doesn't interfere. Oh, you uh, you think somebody might uh, might do something to, to uh, Douglas? Here? I'm sure of it, because it's been tried before. You mean poison him or something like that? Worse. 
Oh? Dope. Poison would let him die a hero, a martyr. But drugs would keep him from winning the show. Oh, I... Well, what makes you suspect somebody might try it? As I said, it's been tried before. Huh? Last year and again a few days ago. And if Harrison R. Kenworthy thinks he can do it again, he's mistaken. Then you know who did it before. I refuse to divulge any names. But you just said... Mr. That... Dollar, I will not tell you. All I ask is that you watch over Laird Douglas Douglas until he has won the show. Oh, and if he does win, as I'm sure he will, I'll insist that you accept a nice bonus. So you can see, I'm very, very serious. And so it went on for another half hour or so. And finally she left, after I'd promised to pick up my bags at the hotel and move out to her joint in fashionable Germantown. I talked a few minutes longer with Harry Branson. I'm so glad you've agreed to take this on, John. As I told you, Mrs. Van Pyten is the most important individual policyholder we have, and doing this favor Harry, for Harry, us... it's not the Mutt Show at Bala Kinwood or Laird Douglas or Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten or you I'm doing this for. It's purely love of the green stuff. Whew. That old dame must be really loaded. John, she has so much money. She, well, she doesn't know how much she has. Industrial empire, that sort of thing. All right, all right. But, Harry, if word ever gets around in the trade that I came down here to play bodyguard to a mutt, so help me, I'll have your head. <clears throat> yes. Uh, but now, hadn't you better go on out to the Maples? Well, first, I want to know about this Harrison R. Kenworthy she mentioned. Oh, that. Yeah, that. She accused him of doping up her Scotty. Well, she really doesn't know, and it, it's really quite complicated. How do you mean? Kenworthy owns a beautiful Kerry Blue Terrier, Lady Odetti's Rolamar Main. Lady o Holy cats, and no pun. Why can't they give an honest dog an honest name? Look, we'll call her Mimi. Go ahead. Hi, dog lovers. Ray, just in time. Meet Harry Branson, Ray Roland. Oh, we know each other. Hello, Harry boy. Mr. Roland. Sure, Harry called me in last year when these two dogs were at each other's throats. Of course, throat. he doesn't mean that literally, John. You see, Mr. Roland is quite an authority on show animals. I've held it against him for years, ever since school. Well, there's no need to hold it against him. And particularly. I don't mean that literally. Oh. Well, John boy, so you came down to help yourself to a handful of dear Mrs. Kelly Van Pyton's coin. More power to you. I knew Harry would call you in on the case. Felt it in my bones. And, brother, you may be in deeper than you think. Oh? What's that supposed to mean, Ray? Has Harry told you about the villain of the piece, Harrison R. Kenworthy? I was just starting to when you so rudely... Yeah, well, Johnny, the whole setup is a riot, but just remember one thing. Yeah? A lot of people have been killed in riots. Now, what's that supposed to mean? I'll tell you what he means, Let Sam. me he tell means... it, Harry. It would take you all day. Uh, sorry, no offense. It's all right. Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead. Okay. Bella Kinwit is the biggest event of the year in the doggy set, okay? Okay. All right. Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten owns Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscope. Real fine Scotty. Yeah, good tea, see? Hey, those pants are really gone. Anyhow, Harrison Kenworthy owns Lady O'Diddy's Rolamar meme, Carrie Blue. Mimi. Huh? I'd get indigestion trying to say that other name. Okay, Mimi. They're two pretty good dogs, especially Mimi, international championship blood and all that. But Mimi's the better dog. Douglas won't stand a chance. I've tried to tell her this, but... Well, go on, go on. Okay. Harrison Kenworthy loves Kelly Van Pyten, see? Oh, loves her money. Him? He's loaded, too. No, I think the old coot really loves her, and I think she loves him. Right, Harry? Yes, I think I'm inclined right, to... Right, but now get this. Yeah? She won't marry him until her Laird Douglas beats his Lady O'Diddy, uh, uh Mimi, yeah. far and squar at the Balakinwood show. How do you like that? Are you kidding? Oh, no, John, it's an accepted fact. Right, so what happens for over wait a year Wait a minute, now, Ray, wait a minute. If he really wants to marry her, why doesn't he just let her dog beat his? And let her be one up on him right from the start? Never. No, boy, he'd never live it down. You don't know these people. Well, this is about the craziest thing I ever heard of. To you and me, sure, but to them it's deadly serious. Are they in love with each other or with their dogs? Well, it's not just love where the dogs are concerned, but pride, which is just about all a lot of these old lonely millionaires have to think about, to live for. Yea, sometimes even unto the fifth and sixth generation. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. But now she said something about her dog being doped at the show last year. Oh, yes, John. You see, it was just a couple of days... Right, just before the finals. It was an attempt to murder the dog with poison. But emergency care both times pulled Lair Douglas through. She told me it was only some kind of a dope that oh, was used. Oh, sure, sure. We kept the truth from her. You don't realize it, boy, but if that dog were to die, she would. Fact. Oh, now, Ray. Oh, yes, John. And the insurance company must keep that dog alive in order to obviate having to pay right. off... Right. <laughs> After all, her policies amount to a right. right. <laughs> it may sound absurd to you, Johnny, but it's no joke. As I said, you don't know these people. But look, it still doesn't make any sense. You just have to take my word for it, and it's happened right here in Philadelphia. Yes, John, and we held the policy. It was an old lady. Right, named... so there you have it. <sighs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll believe you. 
And so the finger points at Harris and her Kenworth. Well, she might like to think that, uh, especially since she doesn't know that poison was used both times, but I don't. What's more, the police feel the same. Oh, now, if you say police dogs, I'll slug you. John, there are times when the sense right, of humor of Harry, yours... dead right, and I do mean dead. No, in all seriousness, Johnny, if I were you, I'd duck out of this assignment. Now, don't say that, Ray, unless John no, is No, 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 go, go ahead and say it. Something ought to start to make sense around All here. All right, listen. The reason I'm sure Harrison R. Kenworthy had nothing to do with the attempted poisonings, the reason the police were called in, the reason I think you ought well, to get, get out to of this... get to the point, Ray? On each occasion, Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten had a bodyguard attending Laird Douglas, in addition to the dog's governess and medicos and so get on. Get to the point. Each time, in order for the poisoner to get to that dog... Ray, please. Each time, the bodyguard was murdered. Still want this case, Johnny? <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow. Well, the joke's no longer a joke. Especially when a killer trains his sights on me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Welcome back. Well, uh, Harry left out a key um, fact, and I guess that's a signal that we're not just going to have comedy uh, for the whole week-long serial. And I like this one. This this is just such a nice change of pace. I don't know if I'd like this uh, every week, but this is just, you know, we've had some heavier episodes, and this one may take a heavier turn yet, but I like the uh, humorous tone of these first couple episodes. And it makes, uh, too, I think, the suspenseful parts we're going to get uh, certainly pack a bit of more of a punch. And uh, she was definitely uh, very eager to get Johnny on board, even offering him to go to Watermakers to get a suit. And that is truly amazing because they sell Clippercraft, the finest yet very thrifty value in men's clothing. At least that's what they said in their advertisement sponsoring uh, one of the last uh, series of the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And also in this episode, we get another reoccurring uh insurance man. And uh, Harry Bartell just did a, a good job in this episode. And Bailey did pretty well as basically the uh, uh, straight man in the uh, sketch. Now, of course, he has some experience with that. Bailey did have a brief uh, film career, and his uh, most prominent role was in Jitterbugs, a Laurel and Hardy picture where he played uh, with them as the guy who got the girl. 
radio offered him a lot more opportunity to do some more uh, dramatic work, and I think that's why mo- where most of his uh, efforts went. But nice to see some uh, more of the uh, comedic side of Bob Bailey. All right, and uh, now to listener comments and feedback. Pastor Lisa writes in, Hi, Adam. I wanted to respond to a listener comment the other day regarding interest in the Suspense Radio series. I subscribe to a few uh, radio classic podcasts on my iPhone, and one of them is called Old Time Radio Suspense. And it's really good quality. However, it's not a daily podcast, more like a weekly. It's very good quality, and I enjoy it. I'm not sure if it is in iTunes. Uh, it very well may be, but hopefully the listener will be able to access it. Keep up the great work. I love your podcast and look forward to tuning in every day. Uh, th- thanks so much for the uh, comment. Um, and, uh, that may be an option. Um, uh, I've, I've seen one titled Old Time Radio Suspense. Not certain if it's the, uh, uh, same one. Um, for most, uh, for most of these podcasts, you can find, uh, at least an unhosted uh, podcast that will do most of the prominent series in some way or another. Uh, for complete series or the more obscure ones, uh, you probably want to go to uh, archive.org or some of the other sites and download uh, directly. But uh, thanks so much for the tip, and you can follow the show on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, also, uh, do encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And thanks to... Uh, Gary, who uh, retweeted one of our uh, episodes to his uh, followers on uh, Twitter, I really do appreciate that, because that definitely helps promote the show. All right, well, the story of Laird Douglas, Douglas of Heatherscope, will continue on Wednesday. Join us uh, tomorrow for the amazing Mr. Malone. If you have uh, additional comments, Box13, greatdetectives.net. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.